This exhibition was designed to really give uh, an overview of this incredible project that is not as well known as some of Kelly's earlier projects. It began in 1999 and Kelly continued to work on it through 2011 up until his death in 2012. Kelly said, as I envisioned them, they would be akin to paintings by Henry Matisse in three dimensions with science fiction overtones. Candor was the birthplace of Superman, and it was on the planet Krypton, which uh, was destroyed by an evil villain, Brainiac. But prior to that, he shrunk Candor, the city, and all its inhabitants, put it under a bell jar with some atmosphere to preserve it. Uh, at some point, Superman retrieves and saves Candor from Brainiac and brings it to the Fortress of Solitude. And then he is charged with protecting Candor and its inhabitants for all time. The underlying tone to this story is really that Superman is a man displaced. You know, his uh, hometown is basically destroyed, it's shrunken, he can't go there, uh, he can't really communicate or live among his people anymore. And so he's sort of an alien on the planet Earth. CandorCon 2000 is what I would consider the first of the Candor's projects. Kelly was invited to produce an artwork for a show called Zeitwenden uh, in Bonn. And this show was focused on artists dealing with the change of the century. So this is in 1999. And Kelly begins doing research on uh, the DC comic book Superman. And as he's doing the research, he comes across depictions and illustrations of the city of Candor over and over again, but they're never the same. And this really intrigues him. He becomes somewhat fixated on it. And it feeds into the project. So the installation consists of a video with Superman reciting poems from Sylvia Plath. There is an animation that was created with the latest technology, and it's a 3D animation of what Candor might look like based on these different source images. Uh, Kelly worked with an animator, and the animator took bits and pieces of all these different iterations of Candor and sort of collaged them in this endless animation that sort of is never fixed. You're never really seeing the city, you're seeing bits and pieces. And then the last part of the installation is live. Model makers are placed within the exhibition, within the installation, and they are creating models in foam core. And these models are based on the research material, these depictions of Candor. The model makers are free to interpret those drawings and create them in three dimensions. And this is a cumulative process, so by the end of the exhibition of CandorCon, there's a crowd of these fantastical uh, models. Candor's full set was created from 2005 to 2009, and this consists of various iterations, uh, sculptures of the city Candor. And they represent 20 of these reference materials that Kelly had found during the course of creating CandorCon 2000. It was incredibly difficult to find an artisan or factory that could actually create these very large bottles. Um, ultimately, Kelly ended up working with a Czech factory, and they are created um, in Pyrex because it's a stronger glass material. And they're actually not blown because this proved to be impossible. They are slumped or uh, molded um, around these forms that Kelly helped to engineer and design. The cities that you see in Candor's full set are created from resin and resin mixes with color. There was a lot of experimentation, a lot of play in terms of what can resin do. You will see a variation in terms of the level of finishing and polish to these cities. There are some cities that are much more organic. You might clearly see found objects and various textures. You can see in some cases where they added sand or beads. There were other uh, techniques such as frothing or whipping the resin to create a foam. 
Kelly's exhibition in Berlin at Jablonka Gallery in 2007 featured 10 different sculptures uh, called Candor sculptures. These were created from the set of 20 images that Kelly had set up as this system. Earlier Candor's works are much more one-to-one, -one, in a sense, with the original illustrations. As Kelly continues to work on the project over almost 10 years, he shifts emphasis and he begins introducing organic elements, uh, rock-like textures. He continues to experiment with video. We see a literal conflation at some point uh, late in the work of two of Kelly's projects, extracurricular activity projective reconstruction video series, which reconstructs imagined traumas or repressed memories, with the Candor sculptures in the form of video narratives that feature live action that is now staged within and around the city of Candor. We are showing a sculpture called Candor 12, and then we are also showing an extracurricular piece that is parenthetically called Dower Gnomes. Uh, these two works are paired in a sense because they have a common uh, focus on city 12 and bottle number 12. If one looks at the Dower Gnomes piece, uh, we are actually now walking within uh, the set where the video was filmed. Gradually it's revealed that these gnomes are not only within the set of this sculptural installation, but they are also in Candor, the city, in a bottle. In the last gallery of this exhibition, you will see a very monumental work that reflects Kelly's increasing interest in playing with scale. This piece is called Candor 10B, Exploded Fortress of Solitude. It's a large mass of rock-like forms that resemble possibly a bunker or a ruin. You can walk inside the cave or inside the sculpture, and there you'll see uh, yet another Candor iteration, um, a beautiful Candor 10 city that's under glass. Uh, the piece also has some memory wear that has been inlaid into the wall of the sculpture. Um, memory wear refers to an old folk tradition of taking baubles and uh, keepsakes, jewelry, costume jewelry, and laying it into clay or uh, grout and creating a, a beautiful sort of mosaic of all these found objects. So Kelly, in another project, had worked with this quite often, and here he integrates it again. I hope that a viewer comes away with uh, not only a deeper understanding of the project, but more insight into the ferocity and the vast imagination of this amazing artist. Mike Kelly truly, I believe, is one of the great artists of the, of the 20th century.